Hey everybody, welcome back to the SOLIDWORKS electrical implementation video series. This video, we're going to talk about the tools tab within the command manager uh, at the top of our screen here. So if you notice here, I do not have any projects open. So a few of the items are grayed out. But in particular, what I wanted to cover in this is the interface configuration and the application settings. So in the inf uh, interface configuration, there's a couple different tabs um, you should be concerned with. The first one is just graphic representation. So how big do we want our cursor, our crosshairs to be? Um, how long do we want each leg of it, as well as the small pixel box in the center? Um, we can also change the zoom direction, the zoom speed. We can change the background of our drawing area. So in my case here, I have it set to white, but if you're coming from another tool um, and you're more comfortable, you can always switch to black, which is nice because when we get to wire styles, if you choose a black wire, it's either going to let you be black or white. So that way, if you do revert your background screen here, it will automatically take that change on to revert to the opposite for those wire styles later on. So I typically leave mine white right now. You can change the, the positions and styles. In my case here, the style, I have dark gray. As you can see, my background is gray, but there are a few other options, light gray, light blue, um, and light. And a couple other options you can use, allow to use Windows, text display, or the vectoral as well. Some other preferences you can choose is what do you want the overall dimensioning to be, uh, metric or imperial, inches and feet. So I have a combination depending on what I'm working with. In this case here, surprisingly, I have metric, but I'm also working in inches and feet. So most times you're, you're going to probably work with, you know, this one or that one, but, you know, to each his own, however you want to set that up. So. You also have the ability to check your local help uh, or utilize the internet, uh, depending on what you're doing and where you are. Some some customers I know of are completely disconnected for security purposes from the internet, so they utilize local uh, help. Your application language. So what is the default language in the software? In this case here, it's English. However, when you're working within the tool, if you have, uh, if you're working internationally, here in the United States, some customers, especially along the northern border, they are also working in French. And along the southern border, some are working in Spanish as well. So you can actually select multiple languages and set priorities for those languages, up to three languages per project. The ones with flags are the ones that are currently available in the software. The, the items that do not have a flag next to it, that language is currently not available. And finally, within the interface configuration, you have rights management. I do not have rights management turned on at this moment, mainly because I have a standalone system and I have access to everything. But in a network situation, maybe I want to turn that on and I can now go ahead and manage my user rights. I'll try to create an, a separate video on setting that up. But right now, it's it's a matter of you turning it on and you can use your Windows login or set a specific login for a user. Um, and then inside managing the rights, you have the ability to set the admin rights or just a user or project owner. So there's a couple different levels of the rights management that you can apply as well. Inside the application settings, this is where in my case here, I have a standalone setup. So mine's going to be set to localhost. It's going to loop back to itself here, but I do need to have certain ports open in the installation. This is default. I did not change this. I did not have to edit this, but if you're working in a network setting, you may need to add additional fields or open additional ports for multiple users to work. In this case here, the main one that needs to be open is 26666. Um, but please refer to the installation instructions on how to set this up correctly. The database, what are we, where are we getting our information from? Where's the application data folder? In my case, it's on my program data folder. And then again, with the SQL database and what it's connecting to and the password for that. And then on the 3D side, where is it looking when I connect my manufacturer parts to my uh, 3D models? Where is it initially going to look for those particular parts? Where am I storing all those models? And I can store it here. 
in this case, which is the default library for SOLIDWORKS Electrical, but if you're already using SOLIDWORKS and you have a folder or you're utilizing PDM, you probably have different folders set up already for all your parts and you're going to want to go ahead and change this directory. Other than that, you do have the ability to set up add-ins. I'm not going to cover the PDM configuration right now, but for add-ins, in this case here, there is a PDM integration that I can set up. I don't have it for this installation right now, but you do have the ability to set that up. If you are also working with the API, if you have access to the API, not everybody has access to it, uh, creating some of their own little widgets to work with SOLIDWORKS Electrical, you would also enable that here. Connected users, if I have more than one user, I can see those users working on a project. I can chat with them right through this window here. I can search for specific information within the databases, components and documents here. And then verify projects allows me to do a quick sanity check essentially of the project I'm working with. If I try to do it right now, I don't have a project open, so it's not gonna work. So ultimately, again, the two things that I really wanted to focus on on here were the interface configuration and the application settings for this. They need to be set up correctly, especially the application settings. Uh, in order for things to connect. If you install the software and your database isn't working correctly, you might want to come in here and check these options here. Make sure you're pointed to the right location. So I hope this helps, especially when you first get started with the software, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.